Y esto es un gran triunfo para los inquilinos de Lakeview. Le bajamos la renta, el gobierno federal pudo darle ayuda para que ellos no tengan que pagar una renta de la quinta avenida. Y se queden aquí esos apartamentos. 446 unidades, apartamentos fueron protegidos. La petición para la primaria y la reelección, ¿cómo va esto? Bueno, va muy bien. Esta semana supimos de que no hay oponentes demócratas, de manera que ya yo quedo calificado automáticamente como el candidato demócrata hacia las elecciones generales en noviembre. Muchas personas especulaban de que yo iba a tener una gran primaria de, de, de personas en Harlem o en Barrio, en otros vecindarios y fue todo lo contrario. El trabajo nuestro, yo creo que fuerte de mi equipo de trabajo, de la comunidad que también me ha respaldado eh, pudo imponer yo creo que una actitud de unidad a través del distrito, donde fue yo, cual yo muy gozo de, de no tener ninguna oposición en mi partido. ¿La petición a cuánto se dio? Bueno, nosotros sometimos 20, más de 20 mil firmas, fue un récord para el Club Demócrata Ser Alto Manhattan por un cambio, para calificar la, la candidatura, pero nadie más sometió firmas, de manera que no hay oponentes en la primaria de ahora de julio 26. Quiero aprovechar para el asunto de la acción militar. ¿Usted piensa que procedía en el caso de Siria? Creo que no obstante a que el, el crimen de armas químicas en contra de un pueblo es horroroso y que deben de haber sanciones fuertes y no acción militar eh, en contra de ese régimen de Assad, creo que el presidente de la Casa Blanca debe de acudir al Congreso. La Constitución lo estipula de esa manera, que deben de acudir al Congreso antes, antes de tomar acciones eh, de, a nivel de guerra y discutir un plan a largo plazo de cómo nosotros vamos a contrarrestar las sanciones del de régimen de Assad. Y no realmente un ataque solitario un día que yo creo que no resuelve el problema. ¿Usted ha pensado en consecuencia de ese hecho? Bueno, la consecuencia de ese hecho, eh, todavía no hemos recibido un reporte detallado de cuántas facilidades fueron destruidas que albergaban armas químicas, pero entendemos de que nosotros debemos de meterle presión no solamente al, al gobierno de Assad, sino quién está financiando todo esto, ¿Qué, qué sectores, corporaciones, individuos o países están canalizando recursos, dinero hacia el régimen de Assad, facilitando crímenes eh, contra la humanidad como el pasado ataque químico. Los neoyorquinos tenemos que tener precaución en algún tipo de, de temor. Siempre tenemos que tener precaución porque Nueva York siempre es un blanco del terrorismo y las personas que ven algo raro deben de automáticamente reportar a las autoridades. Agradecemos que un domingo en vez de estar con su familia junto a Chuma y otros oficiales electos, usted vino aquí a darle a traerle una buena noticia de salvación nuestra gente que más de 20 años con la renta frisada, es un milagro. Bueno, eh, eh, hacer eso dentro de la minoría, el Partido Demócrata es minoría de la Cámara de Representantes en el Senado de la Casa Blanca. Lograr eso prácticamente un milagro. Gracias al senador Schumer que me ayudó para asegurar de que 446 unidades, apartamentos, familias, sean protegidas por más de 20 años, que la renta no suba por más de 20 años, que puedan costear su renta, que en muchos casos es un tercio de todos sus ingresos, que ellos tengan esa oportunidad para sobrevivir y, y el, el costo alto de la canasta familiar. Parecito, usted debe ser bendecido por Dios porque ha logrado algo que era difícil en estos tiempos, como está la economía en Estados Unidos, siendo como usted acaba de decir, los demócratas una minoría. Usted lo logra porque usted es un trabajador incansable que 24 horas se dedica a la comunidad. Muchos se preguntan, ¿cómo lo hace? ¿Cómo está en Washington? ¿Cómo está en Washington? ¿Cómo está en Washington? Bueno, luchamos diariamente para cumplir con el compromiso que nos dio la comunidad de representarlo dignamente en Washington. Mucha gente eh, puede especular de que no se va a lograr nada, pero aquí vemos los frutos de mucho trabajo, entre otros frutos que vamos naturalmente a presentar a la comunidad en los próximos dos meses. Quiero anunciarte también que me acaban de decir esta semana que yo no tengo contrincante para la primaria de Moca. El trabajo nuestro se impuso, el, el equipo nuestro de trabajo se impuso, la colectividad de la unidad en la comunidad se impuso. Por eso me han dado la oportunidad de ser el candidato demócrata de nuevo y enfrentarme a mi contrincante republicano en noviembre. Eso se debe a que usted es un hombre de la comunidad, un hombre religioso, un hombre de Dios, un hombre de familia. Y su partido entiende que lo que usted está haciendo merece más de ahí. Bueno, yo le doy las gracias a mi partido, pero eh, muchas personas especulaban de que yo iba a enfrentar, hace dos años se especulaban de que ahora yo iba a enfrentar grandes oponentes de diferentes vecindarios, de Harlem, de otras áreas del distrito. Y es todo lo contrario. 
se han unido alrededor nuestro, entienden que un equipo unido trabaja mejor juntos, sin recelos, sin envidias, con buena voluntad, trabajar todos por el beneficio de la comunidad. Lo que es de Dios y lo que es del César, a las personas que son ingratas, el viento se lo lleva, Dios está ahí y todo se la cobra. Adriana, por mucho más. It's great to have a partner to work so hard for working families, for average folks, for people who are aspiring to become in the middle class. Adriano Espera. Thank you. Thank you. Give a round of applause for Senator Schumer. Give a round of applause for the Senator Schumer. Imagine what he could do if he was leading the Senate, huh? He's doing this in the minority. Imagine what he would do as leader of our Senate. Oh, yeah. If I become majority leader, they say now I'm the second most powerful man in Washington. I'm not. But if I become majority leader, I will be. And we will not have any of those right wing, take away the rights of people's judges ever on the past on the floor of the Senate. Amen. So, Senator and I are a good team. We even wearing the same uniform today. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I'm glad. Yeah, I'm happy to be uh, part thank of his you, team. Thank you, everybody. So, uh, thank you for uh, being here today. Uh, thank you, Angela. And uh, give yourself a round of applause. Yeah. You deserve that. It was with your help that we got this done by sticking together as a uh, tenant uh, group, uh, the leadership of your tenant association. You were able to, to make this happen. There are 446 units, I'm right, mm -hmm. 435. 435 units in this complex. No, it's 446. 446. 446. 446. Hey, my team, is, my staff is doing I a good job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's 446, 435, somewhere in between there. <laughs> let, me be, let me be politically correct. Right. And, and um, you guys deserve to have affordable housing particularly when you live in this particular neighborhood, which is on Fifth Avenue. So at any time, any bad landlord or speculator could come in and say, let the market forces, let the mar market forces rule the rent in this building, and then you're out. In fact, this victory should be a model for her to follow, to be utilized across the state of New York, the city of New York, to ensure that we save affordable housing. In fact, I think the whole city should look at what we did right here. Because many people say, well, you're in the minority. Don't expect anything from Washington. I tell you what, anything is possible. That's true. Anything is possible when you stick together and you fight together. Anything is doable. And so we're happy to be here to, as Senator Schumer said, to announce this victory. There's 119 uh, tenants here, apartments, that are burdened by paying over, just slightly over 30% of their gross income. So w roughly one out of every $3 that they put in their pocket has to go towards rent. That's too much of a load when you have two children, you have seniors, medication, food, the cost of living in New York City has gone up. That's too much of a load to be able to survive and make ends meet. But this particular initiative that we included in the omnibus bill will ease that pain. And it will ensure that those people that are paying uh, a third of their salary towards rent won't have to do that anymore because this will, this will trigger a project-based Section 8 program that will help those uh, very needy uh, neighbors uh, of this particular uh, development. And so I'm happy to be, be part of that. You know, we had some victories also some monies allocated for NYCHA. For Yay. example, for example, we had an increase, an increase, listen to this, because this hasn't I think, been told in the news. There's been an increase in capital dollars in NYCHA from $1.94 billion to $2.75 billion. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Uh, an, an increase of an additional 5,000 vouchers, Section 8 voucher. 5,000 families will now get, new families will get Section 8 vouchers. And, and a 40% increase in the operational cost of public housing across the country. So that's a victory there as well. While we're in the minority, imagine what we could do next year if things continue to go the way they are. 
Imagine what we can do when we can set the agenda and the table to be supportive of you, the working class and middle class families of New York that make New York run. This is very important. So and that's why I'm here. We, my staff, Valeria, came in from Washington. Mm -hmm. She worked. Stand up, Valeria, please. Yeah. She worked very hard. She even crossed to the other side, to the other side of the aisle. And she came back alive. I was surprised to see her come back alive. And you know, and she got some stuff done. Working on that side, I said, go over there and work your magic for me. And convince them that this must be included in the omnibus bill. And it was, and as the senator said, this is now a program that will benefit families at least 20 years. From 20 to 40 years, it could be. And it provides that window of opportunity uh, to ensure that, that the apartment, can, can, right here on Fifth Avenue, continue to be affordable for all of you. So I'm happy to be part of that. This is just the beginning. We're going to do more. We're going to do more for you. We want to continue to work with you with the leadership of this uh, complex. Very effective, I must say, very, very uh, committed to the cause of all of you. I support their commitment to you and your commitment to yourselves and your neighbors. We will not be able to do this unless we come together. And so I'm very happy for the work that you did. I'm very proud of the work that you did on this particular item. It should be the envy and the example of the rest of the city. If we could do this all over the city, we could do so much more for working class New York. We could make New York, we could lift New York up again because you know, the rent the rent is too damn high. You know what I mean? <laughs> the rent is just too damn high, right? Anywhere you go. Anywhere you go is just too high, and you can't, you can't pay your rent, or you got to take 30, 40, 50 percent from your pocket to pay your rent. What are you going to be left with? With your kids, your grandmother, your mother, your father, prescription drugs, you know, clothing, uh, food, transportation. It's just too much. And so we must preserve complex. I'm happy to be part of this. And now with that, uh, let me please uh, introduce to you uh, someone that was also with he here with us a year ago when we uh, met with you and, and was committed. Estaba comprometida ella. Estuvimos aquí hace, I can do it in both languages too. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm working on a third. I'm not telling you what's this. But estuvo aquí con nosotros ella y esto es un gran triunfo para los inquilinos de Lakeview. Le bajamos la renta al gobierno federal. Pudo darle ayuda para que ellos no tengan que pagar una renta de la quinta avenida. Se queden aquí en su apartamento. 446 unidades de apartamento fueron protegidos hoy. Let me introduce the great borough president of this Manhattan, Gail. Monumental occasion. A year ago, we said it could be done, and here we are. Senator Schumer, would you please tell the people what you have been able to accomplish? Thank you. Thank you. And I only could accomplish it with my comrade in arms, Adriano Espeyat, your congressman, and the support of all the elected officials who were here. I want to thank all of them for turning out, and I certainly want to thank our great Tenants Association for the amazing work that you have done. Now, we all know how important affordable housing is in New York City. If we become a city where only the very wealthy can live, this city will fold up and die. Because who does the work? Yeah, we, do, we do. Right. Who serves the food? Who cleans the streets? Yeah. Who's, well, who's in the stores working? Average folks who don't have too much income. And yet, what's happened in New York City is things have gotten more and more and more expensive. And it's very hard to live. So we have an imperative in this city to preserve affordable housing Absolutely. every day. And fewer and fewer affordable apartments and homes are available to working people, to middle class people, for those struggling to get to the middle class. And particularly a place like this, like Lakeview. You know what they say, everything is location, 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 location. right? Well, Lakeview's, uh, situ Lakeview's location is about one of the best in New York City. Right off Fifth Avenue, right off Central Park. And it's one of the few remaining Mitchell Lama developments left in East Harlem. 
I know about Mitchell Lama. My wife was raised in Mitchell Lama. Okay. I ha hate to tell you the name of the Mitchell Lama project she was raised in. In Brooklyn. Trump Village. Oh. Actually, her part of it was not Trump Village. They called it Trump Village. But her part was called War Bass, done by the amalgamated clothing workers. Anyway, although my father-in-law was a cab driver, so he's passed away. Anyway, so it's one of the few remaining Michelama developments in Harlem. So what we say, the rent that you are charged is much lower than the market rent, meaning that if there were no restrictions and no limitations, the rents here would go so far, so high up that everybody would have to leave. Mm -hmm. The old people, the children, the working husbands, the working wives, the single folks, everyone would have to go. And in would come some very nice people probably from all over the globe who had a lot of money. But what would you do? You wouldn't be able to find a place to live that you could afford maybe 50 miles out, 100 miles out, um, and you couldn't have your job. By the way, the number one thing that prevents people of average means and people trying to get to average means from uh, having a good job is housing. Because there's no housing nearby that people can live in where the, where the jobs are. So what Lakeview has been is an oasis of affordability in a real estate market that is out of the reach for so many New Yorkers. And if these apartments were increased to market rent, hundreds of tenants, seniors, children, working families, would find themselves in an impossible situation. Now that's where we stood, when was it? Two years ago or a, a year, year ago. ago? A year ago, a year ago a year March, ago. I was here. I made the promise that I would do everything I could using the new cloud I had gotten as minority leader All right. to keep the affordability here and in other places. And we just had an omnibus budget bill where I had a lot of say. Guess what? Trump didn't get his wall, but we got our tunnel. Yes. <laughs> we had a great deal of success in that, in that budget. And with Adriano's staff, and Adriano, of course, we worked really hard, and I'm now proud to announce the results of that hard work. There's language in the bill that will help Lakeview keep the rents down so they're affordable for the people who live here. We gave HUD the tools that, they, that gets them to ensure Lakeview's affordability. When the government designed Mitchell Lama, uh, the idea was to provide middle class housing and affordable housing. But they said they didn't think too far ahead. They said, well, after 20 years, uh, that affordability would expire, okay? And that's what's coming up now. Lakeview was built in the 70s, uh, and no one realized back then that the rents in this area would get so high that people couldn't afford them. So what we did is we created something, we, we secured money in the bill for something called RAD, mm -hmm. Rental Assistance Demonstration Program, that puts a cap on the area's FMR, fair market rent, so that keeps it the way it is. The previous cap, 120%, wasn't sufficient. When apartments on the same block can affect millions, you know, they can sell them for millions of dollars. So now Lakeview will enter into a new project-based rental agreement which will guarantee Lakeview's affordability for the minimum of 20 years. And hopefully After 20 years, we'll have to come back again. <laughs> but, but we're happy. We're happy with the 24 years. And there's more good news. It's now set up to include tenants who earn under 95% of area media and income. So if you're earning a fairly low salary, this is going to be good for you as well. You'll be able to afford the housing. So this is a great victory. We secured it in a number of different um, 
projects throughout the city, not just Lakeview. I'm going to have to leave soon because then I have to go to Starrett City in Brooklyn. Anyone know anyone in Starrett City? Yes. 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 Yeah? Yes. So I have to go over there with Adriano's colleague, Hakeem Jeffries, yes. That's right. who helped us on that one. And Felice Machetti and all those people. I had to save it once when I was a congressman. You weren't my district then, now I'm a senator. So. <laughs> um, but in any case, so this is great, great news, not just for you, but for New York. Yes. We cannot become a city of the very rich and the very poor only. We have to have middle class people, working families, people struggling, new immigrants, all have to have a place in this great city. And if this city evolves so it doesn't, it'll be the beginning of the end of New York. But we are here to say we're not going to let that happen as we have done here at Lakeview. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's great to be here with you. And now, are you going to introduce Adriano or am I? You can introduce Adriano. Okay. So, Adriano and I have been friends for close to, when I ran in 1998 against Al D'Amato, and no one thought I would win. And there were a few people who were there with me. What were you, district leader? I was an assembly member. Assembly member already. He was assemblyman in East Harlem, and he backed me. He had faith in me. And you may remember that election night. Not only did we send Al D'Amato home to Island Park, Long Island, but we put Newt Gingrich on the midnight train. Back. <laughs> and Adriana was there. So uh, it's great to be here. It's great to have a partner to work so hard for working families, for average folks, for people who are aspiring to become in the middle class. Adriano Thank Estero. Thank you. Thank you. Give a round of applause for Senator Thank Schumer. You. Give a round of applause for the Senator please. Imagine what he could do if he was leading the Senate, huh? He's doing this in the minority. Imagine what he would do as leader of our Senate. Oh, yeah. Say, if I become majority leader, they say now I'm the second most powerful man in Washington. I'm not. But if I become majority leader, I will be. And we will not have any of those right wing, take away the rights of people's judges ever on the past on the floor of the Senate. Amen. So, Senator and I are a good team. We even were in the same uniform today. Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, I'm glad. That I'm happy to be uh, part thank of this team. Thank you, everybody. So, uh, thank you for uh, being here today. Uh, thank you, Angela. And uh, give yourself a round of applause. Yeah. You deserve that. It was with your help that we got this done by sticking together as a uh, tenant uh, group, uh, the leadership of your tenant association. You were able to, to make this happen. There are 446 units, I'm right, mm -hmm. 435. 435 units in this complex. No, it's 446. 446? 446. 446. Hey, my team, is, my staff is doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's 446, 435, somewhere in between there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, me be, let me be politically correct. Right. And, and uh, you guys deserve to have affordable housing particularly when you live in this particular neighborhood, which is on Fifth Avenue. So at any time, any bad landlord or speculator could come in and say, let the market forces, let the mar market forces rule the rent in this building, and then you're out. In fact, this victory should be a model for her to follow, to be utilized across the state of New York, the city of New York, to ensure that we save affordable housing. In fact, I think the whole city should look at what we did right here. Because many people say, well, you're in the minority. Don't expect anything from Washington. I tell you what, anything is possible. That's <laughs> true. Anything is possible when you stick together and you fight together. Anything is doable. And so we're happy to be here to, as Senator Schumer said, to announce this victory. There's 119 uh, tenants here, apartments, that are burdened by paying over, just slightly over 30% of their gross income. So w roughly one out of every $3 that they put in their pocket has to go towards rent. That's too much of a load when you have to 
children, you have seniors, medication, food, the cost of living in New York City has gone up. That's too much of a load to be able to survive and make ends meet. But this particular initiative that we included in the omnibus bill will ease that pain. And it will ensure that those people that are paying uh, a third of their salary towards rent won't have to do that anymore because this will, this will trigger a project-based Section 8 program that will help those uh, very needy uh, neighbors uh, of this particular uh, development. And so I'm happy to be, be part of that. You know, we had some victories also, some monies allocated for NYCHA. For Yay. example, for example, we had <laughs> an increase, an increase, listen to this, because this hasn't I think, been told in the news. There's been an increase in capital dollars in NYCHA from $1.94 billion to $2.75 billion. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Uh, an, an increase of an additional 5,000 vouchers, Section 8 voucher. 5,000 families will now get, new families will get Section 8 vouchers. And, and a 40% increase in the operational cost of public housing across the country. So that's a victory there as well. While we're in the minority, imagine what we could do next year if things continue to go the way they are. That's right. Imagine what we could do when we can set the agenda and the table to be supported of you, the working class and middle class families of New York that make New York run. This is very important. So and that's why I'm here with my staff, Valeria, came in from Washington. She worked, stand up, Valeria, please. Yeah. She worked very hard. She even crossed to the other side, to the other side of the aisle. And she came back alive. I was surprised to see her come back alive. And you know, and she got some stuff done. Working on that side, I said, go over there and work your magic for me and convince them that this must be included in the omnibus bill. And it was, and as the senator said, this is now a program that will benefit families at least 20 years. From 20 to 40 years it could be. And it provides that window of opportunity uh, to ensure that, that the apartment can, can, right here on Fifth Avenue continue to be affordable for all of you. So I'm happy to be part of that. This is just the beginning. We're going to do more. We're going to do more for you. We want to continue to work with you with the leadership of this uh, complex. Very effective, I must say, very, very uh, committed to the cause of all of you. I support their commitment to you and your commitment to yourselves and your neighbors. We will not be able to do this unless we come together. And so I'm very happy for the work that you did. I'm very proud of the work that you did on this particular item. It should be the envy and the example of the rest of the city. If we could do this all over the city, we could do so much more for working class New York. We could make New York, we could lift New York up again because you know, the rent the rent is too damn high. You know what it is. The rent is just too damn high, right? Anywhere you go, anywhere you go is just too high, and you can't you can't pay your rent. Or you got to take 30, 40, 50 percent from your pocket to pay your rent. What are you going to be left with? With your kids, your grandmother, your mother, your father prescription drugs, you know, clothing, uh, food, transportation. It's just too much. And so we must preserve complex. I'm happy to be part of this. And now with that, uh, let me please uh, introduce to you uh, someone that was also with he here with us a year ago when we uh, met with you and, and was committed. Estaba comprometida ella. Estuvimos aquí hace I could do it in both languages, too. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm working on a third. I'm not telling you what's this. But estuvo aquí con nosotros ella, y esto es un gran triunfo para los inquilinos de Lakeview. Le bajamos la renta, el gobierno federal pudo darle ayuda para que ellos no tengan que pagar una renta de la quinta avenida. Se queden aquí esos apartamentos. 446 unidades, apartamentos fueron protegidos hoy. Let me introduce the great power president of this Manhattan, Gail Brewer. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, I want to thank Angela and all the TA, and I want to thank Joanne Lawson for her work previously, and I want to thank Community Board 11. Um, so thank you very much for all the Community Board that you worked on. So yes, the Congressman is absolutely correct. A year ago, along with the local officials, and even before that with Keith Wright, we heard of this guy named Charlie Gidner. We didn't know who the hell he was. <laughs> and all of a sudden, we heard he was going to be head of Lakeview. 
And of course, we are panicked about losing affordability. You, everybody in this room felt the same way. So we, per, we began with Hallie Chu from my office, who's really fabulous at figuring out housing issues, a potential preservation tool. Alphabet City, RAD, PPRA, PVB, Article 11, 421A, LAP, sticky vouchers. We were trying absolutely everything. But we knew that we wanted to preserve. And I want to thank New York State Homes and Community Renewal because they were with us all the way. That agency was phenomenal. So when repairs began last year, we kept you know tabs on the kitchens, whether they were upgraded, the 10th floor, all the kinds of issues that were involved. And we worked with the agency, the attorneys, the owner, the tenant association, and everybody. We wrote to HUD, we met with HUD, um, we made sure that there was a joint effort with the senator and the congressman and all the elected officials. And it was four years of effort. It wasn't just all, you have been working. You really are the you. model TA. I want you to know that. You have been working endlessly. Yeah. Endlessly. Yeah. And what, what the congressman and the senator have done to get this information into the 28 omnibus spending bill that a man al allows Lakeview and others to use the RAD program is really, really impressive. So now there is, the law now allows Lakeview's owner to get enough money from the federal government to cover the cost of operating Lakeview. However, there's still challenges, and you'll hear that from the state. But without this bill language, Lakeview's owner can only receive a maximum of 1,789 as their fair market rent value for the two bedroom apartment under section eight, and that's project-based section eight. And we all know that 1,789 is nowhere near the fair market cost. I know that Schaumburg Plaza, now called Heritage, I always call it Schaumburg Plaza, is, is two bedroom rentals are at $3,000 a month or more. So the omnibus bill, the subsidy level that the owner will receive for Lakeview will be comparable. That's what's so important about what the federal officials did. And to be clear, the problem that we don't have is that Lakeford's owner, to the best of my knowledge, has not confirmed whether he will pursue that. We're going to pressure. Mm -hmm. And we know that the omnibus bill has made a very attractive option. I was in the room when he said, if you get rat, I'm going to go with That's it. We better hold to his mm -hmm. promise. Yeah, too. That's what we heard. But we heard that. And if he chooses RAD, which is what he promised, then that will be 20 more years, as you heard from the congressman and the senator, and even more. So it will mean that the Lakeview tenants who are currently paying more than 30% of your annual household income, the 100 of you will see your rent going down. And more importantly, capital improvements will continue. That is really important. There are many details still to work out and decisions to be made, but what we have achieved, thanks to you and these amazing group of people here, is a very, very important. Um, and we, and it's a steep, uh, it's a sure, but it's a, it's a step for preserving Lakeview's affordability. So congratulations to the senator and the congressman and to all of you, and we are never going to give up. Thank you very much. Now let's hear from our public advocate, Letitia James from Brooklyn. Brooklyn. So I want to thank Senator Schumer and I want to thank Congressman Espiat and all my colleagues in government. Um, as I look around this room, I can see the fears and the concerns of so many New Yorkers as I travel this city, individuals who are just concerned about keeping their home. And we all know that the crisis in affordable housing is inextricably tied to the homelessness situation that we are seeing on the streets of New York. And it's a shame that tonight almost 50,000 New Yorkers are homeless and a third of them are children and they look like the individuals in this room. And so that's why government has a responsibility and a duty um, to respond to the needs of New Yorkers and respond to the people um, who support government. And so I am so glad that uh, we now have Christmas in April. <laughs> it's a good day. And I don't know about you, but today's Sunday. I feel like si singing, uh, and the saints came marching through. <laughs> but they came marching through with money. And so at a time when my office is bombarded with complaints from New Yorkers who are fa facing eviction, can't pay their rent. At a time when I speak to my colleagues at the legal aid, uh, legal services, and there's hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers in court, 
who are facing harassment, who are living in neighborhoods uh, that are increasingly becoming gentrified and people can no longer afford them. We, government, your elected officials, have a responsibility and a duty to stand up and fight back with every means necessary. And that means going to Washington and facing, yes, Mr. 45, <laughs> and saying you've got to do, you've got to provide for New Yorkers because we are facing this housing crisis. And in the state of New York, having elected officials who recognize their responsibility and their duty and who act like Democrats. And in the city council, doing all that we can. So I just wanted to come here to say congratulations. Congratulations to all of you. Congratulations to our Bur Borough President, who obviously has been on the ground for so many issues. I want to thank her. And I want to thank all of you. I want to thank Angela. And I want to thank, um, she's not here, Miss Joanne Lawson. Absolutely. Your president. Yes. In her absence. And I want to thank you for holding on. Holding on and for believing, believing in government. And this November, if you don't think politics matter, yes. Yes. this, now you understand how politics matters. Yes. Yes. And so this November, we've got to tell all of our relatives, even if you haven't spoken to them in years, <coughs> call them in every state across this nation, and particularly those in the South, mm -hmm. call them and tell them to vote blue. Mm -hmm. And when we have a wave of blue coming in, then the senator will be in the majority. The House of Representatives will turn blue. And then, and then, we can come in and respond to the needs of New Yorkers who are hungry, who are homeless, our children, our schools, our streets, and all of the reasons why we have government. All of those reasons, they will respond to your needs. This is a great day of celebration, but we've got a lot of work to do. It's just the beginning and not the end. There's success here, but there are a countless number of individuals throughout the city who are struggling. So don't ever forget it. And understand that the power and the courage and the fight lies with all of you. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you, thank you Letitia. Now we're going to hear from our assembly member who has been steadfast on this issue, has been persistent, consistent, never gave up, and has been here all the time. Robert Rodriguez. Yeah. Thank you, Congressman. I think that's another way of saying they are tired of hearing from me about Lakeview. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Senator Schumer probably, I call his office and he's like, are you calling about Lakeview again? <laughs> like, no, something else this time. But that's really where we are. And I want to thank Gail for her support since 2014. We have begun digging into this issue about how to deal with what really is a wonderful development on Fifth Avenue that was falling apart. Yeah. And how do we fix it? And this is one of the times where I am proud to say I am in government with tremendous leaders and colleagues who are serving in the same way. Every single level of government came to the table. Gail brought the city and HPD was willing to do tax abatements. You know, we brought the state, we created a $75 million fund with HCR in case we had to pick up the load. But none of those scenarios would have done what we did here today which is make sure we don't lose any units of affordable housing. Everything else we were gonna lose. Sticky vouchers, all the different alphabet soup. At some point, if you left your apartment, it was going market rent. What we did today, we sent the congressman and the senator to do the impossible. Which, by the way, we were told no twice, right? Different administrations, 2014 to 2018, different administrations, different HUDs, we got told no, we were out of continuing resolutions, we were in a budget, out of budget, didn't get a budget. These guys made it happen in impossible circumstances, red all around. Red Senate, red House, red President. But we sent them to do something incredibly hard and they exceeded expectations. And that was what is unique about government. Everybody came to bring resources. Every agency came to the table to say that middle class housing, Michelama housing, working force housing, people like us who live in East Harlem have the right to stay. And we need to figure out, figure it out amongst yourselves, right? Be like, I don't want to hear any arguing, I don't want to hear any stories, just figure it out. And we did. Yeah. 
So I want to say thank you to the congressman and the senator for their work. We have a little more work to do, as Gail mm -hmm. mentioned. Yes. We got to sign that deal on the dotted line, make sure the lap protects people who don't get Section 8, and make sure project-based Section 8 is in place so that we don't lose any units. We are almost there, so we just need to ask for a little bit more perseverance as we cross that finish line. But we can see it, and we are closer than we've ever been. So I want to say, say thank you for four years of calls, pushing, energy, and the support you gave us to make that argument in all of our houses of government. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. He's done a tremendous job. Give him a round of applause. I know, I know, I'm a rookie. I'm a rookie. But I want to be the rookie of the year. I want to be the rookie of the year. And so, you know, as I move forward, and I understand that I'm now the nominee of the Democratic Party with no opposition, I'm moving to November. I will be on a campaign in November. All right? Now let me allow, uh, allow me to introduce another young man who's uh, hit the ground running, and uh, he is representing us in the state senate, and uh, we're expecting great things from the state senate this year, because I see, I hear that there's a new configuration of forces there. I'm not going to get into it because it's not about politics; it's about people and government. Yes, yeah, but right. it is a little bit about politics all the yes, time. It's always, uh, it's always about that. But you know, I'm sure that he's going to do great things in the state senate. Please welcome Senator Benjamin. As someone who is operating in the state Senate minority, I cannot tell you how hard it is to get anything done. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to impress upon you how incredible what Congressman Espayat and Senator Schumann has done in the minority to protect Lakeview for at least 20 years and provide affordable housing. I want to give him another thank you and a round of applause for delivering for our district. Um, I just want to say- Bless you. I'm new. I'm very. I'm new to this fight. Uh, I got elected on May 23rd, and let me say to you, on May 24th, Joanne Lawson somehow found my number and said, "You're new, but I hear you understand housing, and I'm going to put you to work because all of you are going to work for Lakeview." And I have been involved, and I'm and I'm so honored that I um, have the opportunity to participate with such a honest tenant leader with integrity. That is important. That is very important. Let me, let me also uh, thank the owner, Charlie Gendron. Um, it, it is not lost on me that he could have just sold a Lakeview for the, for the highest price he can get. Um, I, he has been in many meetings. Uh, I mean, he has been what is an example of what you want. Now, to Gail's point, we need to sign on the project base. Um, now, part of that is we need to make sure we get this Article 11 from the city, and I know we're going to work on that uh, to make sure that it's appropriate. But I'm just honored to be here, and I'm, and I'm really excited to be part of such a great team. I mean, it's teamwork that makes the dream work, right? <laughs> and our us elected officials, we're working together in a way that's great. Robert Rodriguez in the State Assembly is a godsend. He knows the issues. He focuses on the work. Let me, and, and, you know, and I know sometimes politicians get a, bad, get a bad rap and all that. This is a smart, intelligent assembly member right. who yeah. understands the issues. He doesn't just kind of glaze over at a high level. I said, Robert, sit down and talk about Lakeview. Sit down and talk about congestion pricing. He knows the details. And guess what? The devil is always in yeah. the details. Yeah. And so I'm glad to be part of this leadership team. And thank you, Congressman, again, for putting this together. This is fantastic news for the people. Thank you so much. So in closing, I want everyone in the room to give a shout out for Joanne Lawson. Because we would not be here if she was being such a stalwart leader for our Tennessee Association. So thank you, Joanne, wherever you are. Thank you so much. Enjoy your Sunday, and I promise you the weather is going to change. <laughs>